Hello there, Vinyl community and YouTube, and howdy, Captain Howdy. Uh, congratulations to your 1800 subscribers again, I guess. Uh, and welcome back to the Vinyl community after your hiatus. Uh, this is a response to your contest, uh, and it uh, will be a pleasure to answer this question of yours. Uh, you want us to talk about comebacks and uh, covers that are better than the originals. Uh, I'm a real sucker for comebacks. I, I definitely love when an artist who has been away for a while all of a sudden can, after a few m many years away, can get his or her career back together again and hit the charts, hit the charts one more time. I just love that. Uh, it's almost like uh, teaching the trendsetters and everybody else that I'm not dead yet. I'm, I still have a career and uh, I, uh, my music is still just as good as the young artists that are popular right now. I, uh, in some form I love that. Uh, but it was hard to find that real special artist. Uh, it's hard to find someone that uh, nobody else have picked. Uh, but my suggestion uh, became an artist that uh, a band that back in 1980s uh, were one of the best and most selling synth pop bands. Uh, and uh, I'm talking about OMD, Orchestral Maneuvers in the Dark. They were selling big with the uh, albums like uh, Dazzle Ships, Architecture and Morality, and so on, uh, and had hits with Onela, Enola Gay and, and uh, Joan of Arc and, and uh, all of these fantastic hits. If you leave, fantastic song. Uh, but uh, back in uh, uh, towards the mid. Should I say end of the 80s? The career faded away. I'm not going to say that Young Culture and Crush were f big failures, but they didn't sell as much as the uh, big selling albums in the beginning of the 80s. Uh, and uh, during 87, 88, the hits were not didn't reach the highest position of the charts. Uh, they more or less uh, quitted, uh, they split up, and uh, uh, the singer Andy McCluskey formed a new OMD, uh, but it was still named or Orchestral Manuas in the Dark OMD, it's still the, the same band, uh, even though one member were gone. So, uh, that usually isn't a very good sign, because when you form a new version of the same band, when one artist continues the same uh, band, that usually uh, is a recipe for failure. But uh, Andy McCluskey managed to uh, make a return that was even bigger than ever before. Uh, and this album, Sugar Tax, became a huge success. Uh, giving fantastic hits like uh, Sailing on the Seven Seas, uh, a fantastic song, uh, and uh, Pandora's Box, who was a great, great hit. Uh, and uh, even the album after this, Liberator, was a pretty good success. Uh, and uh, they managed to make a return once again in 2010 when they made the album uh, History of Modern, uh, who, uh, when uh, Paul Humphreys were back in the band again. So uh, they managed to do a uh, success twice actually, but this one was a. Uh, I, I remember when I heard uh, Sailing on the Seven Seas climbing up to the uh, hit charts again that I was so happy uh, that OMD was back and uh, told everyone that uh, OMD is not dead yet. 
we're stronger than ever and I really like that because it's a really really favorite band of mine so OMD is my suggestion for return you also had another uh, question uh, about uh, cover versions that are better than the original uh, there are often many reasons for a cover to be to that you feel that the cover is better than the original. It can be because uh, you heard the cover first. Uh, you hardly knew that uh, this uh, uh, this is a cover song that it was an original one, uh, and uh, therefore you're more used to the, uh, the the cover version. It can be that you have actually heard both songs, and then realize, hmm, this uh, the cover version is actually better. So, uh, it's an interesting question, actually. Uh, I picked out a few examples here. Uh, the first one is a little oddity. This is, I think, a British band that uh, I was introduced to by a, a guy at uh, a community radio station I worked on uh, back in 1996. And uh, this guy came with a CD that he wanted me to play in the radio show. And uh, I said, sure, okay. It was a wish from him. Uh, and uh, it was a version of uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers Under the Bridge made by a band called Genocide 2. Uh, and uh, from the beginning I thought, what is this? Is this? I, I'm no fan of the original at all. Uh, or Red Hot Chili Peppers at all for that matter. Uh, some great songs, but overall a band that I... Uh, is totally uninterested in. Uh, but this version was actually so different that it made me... Uh, all, the more I listened to the song, the more I realized that this actually is good. This actually isn't so bad. Uh, it is some kind of a trip-hop version. The Genocide 2 is a band who made dance music with a little trip with trip-hop feeling, but they do it with spacey uh, atmosphere and much experimental uh, stuff in the music. And uh, I was able to find this CD with them, uh, New Life for the Haunted, uh, in Stockholm uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and I bought it immediately for 20 cents actually uh, because I wanted this under the bridge. I felt so good that I finally found it. It's a, it's totally different from Red Hot Chili Peppers version. Uh, that, uh, but uh, it's still, you recognize the song and that's what I like about the cover. Uh, if you do something real unique with it and not only do a rip off uh, that sounds almost like uh, the original and it's pretty boring then but here they managed to do something really of their own of the, of the great song or of this song uh, I just watched, watched uh, Carsten Olsen's uh, response he uh, had a suggestion of uh, knocking on heaven's door with Guns N' Roses uh, and I agree that uh, I'm not huge. Uh, he, he wasn't back then a fan of Bob Dylan's version. Uh, I've never been a fan of Bob Dylan's version. If I'm going to compare, though, between Bob Dylan's version and, and uh, Guns N' Roses version, I might say that I prefer Bob Dylan's version. But maybe it's because I don't like uh, Guns N' Roses all that much overall. But there is one version that I think is better than both Guns N' Roses and Bob Dylan's version. That is Randy Crawford's version from 1989 and the album Rich and Poor. Uh, Randy Crawford's version is very very soulish. Soul, she made a soul ballad out of it with her fantastic voice. Sorry, I think Randy Crawford's voice is better than Bob Dylan's and, and uh, Axl Rose's voices. A whole lot better. And I really think that this is a very, very relaxing and smooth and uh, uh, fantastic person, especially with the voice that she has. Uh, one song that immediately came, uh, came to my mind was this one. Uh, because this one definitely is a song that is better than original. Here is a pr prime example of what I said in the beginning, a song that... Uh, I've heard this one 
uh, first I hardly knew that it was a cover uh, back in 1987 uh, I listened to the cover of it finally and realized that I stick with this one I guess, guess I was pretty much used to it but on the hand now when I'm a, I'm a many 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 years later I still think that this is better than the original one I'm talking about Pet Shop Boys uh, from the actual albums always on my mind and this is a special uh, release bonus the double pack it also contains the 12 inch of always on my mind also in the same package so here's the both album and the 12 inch uh, and Petra Boys have really done something special always on my mind in this original is a ballad here they managed to do a and when they do take a ballad and do a disco version of it, usually it doesn't fit one bit. But Pet Shop Boys managed to make it so well that it really, really, it really works as a, uh, a version of its own. That uh, you could, if you haven't heard the original, you can easily hear that this, uh, think that this definitely is a Pet Shop Boys original. Uh, and uh, it's a really, really awesome production. I have always been a huge fan of this version. It's definitely one of the best songs of the 80s. Final example, uh, maybe a little forgotten today, but it's also an 80s classic. Uh, originally made by uh, uh, Lips Incorporated back in 1980, Funky Town. Uh, I'm not going to say the Funky Town original is bad. I think it's uh, way overplayed. But I think uh, it's okay. But, but I think it's a little boring, actually. Uh, not the best uh, synthesizer song of his era. Uh, but back in, back in 1987, when Australian Pseudo Echo came with their version of this Funky Town, I really was knocked down because it was such an amazing production, uh, disco rock version uh, with such a fantastic groove and, and, and amazing production. I really loved it. Still think that this is actually way better than Lips Incorporated's original actually. So that was my response, Captain Howdy. I hope that you are satisfied and that you get a whole lot of new subscribers uh, good to see you back uh, and uh, I hope that you and everybody else have a really nice time no matter where we are where you are no matter what you do uh, I have a contest response also for vinyl collector James to do so uh, and I just come home came home from Stockholm so you're going to have a another Stockholm uh, travel video uh, I'm uh, going to edit that. It will be out hopefully sometime in near June or in June. So until next time I hope that you have a nice time so take care and bye bye.